Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about the basic structures of the heart. And I've drawn here the left and the right view of the heart. So first we'll start with the left view. What I've drawn that's different in the left view with the right view is a few different things. First, it's these little oracles, also why we call the left side of the heart the auricular face of the heart. These oracles are little ear-shaped flaps that basically make up a lot of the muscle of the atria. And we'll talk about what are the atria and the ventricles in a second, but these oracles hold the muscles of the atria. When we look at the atrium, basically I've divided the heart into quadrants. So up here we have, for example, right here and here is the atrium of the heart. So even though this is the left view, this is the right atrium. And then here we have the left atrium. And then underneath the atrium, in the bottom half of this quadrant, we have the left ventricle and the right ventricle. And the right. Great. So essentially, if we were to talk about how blood flows within the heart and in and out of the heart, What's important to remember is that on this left side, this is systemic circulation. And on the right side, this is for pulmonary circulation. So what that means is that basically with the heart, it's constantly pumping the fresh oxygen rich blood to the entire body. And it's also receiving this nutrient lacking deoxygenated blood coming back to the heart after it's already been to the, to the whole body. So if we were to start with this right side of the heart, right over here, the pulmonary circulation, we have blood entering from the rest of the body into the atria. So I'll draw in green, maybe I'll do it in yellow, the path of the blood. So if the nutrient lacking blood is entering into the right atrium after going through systemic circulation. It's going to collect here in the right atrium and it's going to be sitting up here and then once the atrium pumps and contracts it's going to push this blood into the right ventricle. This right ventricle is smaller than the left ventricle and this is because the right ventricle is part of pulmonary circulation. It only needs muscle from the right ventricle to propel the blood into the lungs where they can be reoxygenated again. And this is important because that distance is not very long, so it doesn't need such a strong muscle to push the blood. So basically the blood will collect in the right ventricle and then it's going to get pumped out of the right ventricle towards the lungs. So I'll write that up here, lungs. And this is also known as the pulmonary circulation. This trunk that it follows, this one right here, this is called the pulmonary trunk. In green I'll draw the other side. So if we have blood that's entering the heart after already going to the lungs and becoming now rich with the oxygenated blood, it's going to enter into the atrium, the left atrium of the heart. It's going to collect in the left atrium of the heart and then it'll contract, the muscles of the atrium will contract and push this blood into now the left ventricle. The blood will collect in the left ventricle and this will hold a lot more blood as well and then it will be pumped out of the left ventricle and in to the aorta where it'll be dispersed to the rest of the body that needs the fresh supply of oxygen. So this will be now systemic circulation. I'll draw it here, just saying that this in general is the aorta and it's responsible for systemic circulation. Great. One more thing that I'll point out when we look at the heart from the left view is we have a couple important grooves and I'll change the color here. Maybe we'll do it in light blue. So these important grooves 
One of them is this one here. This is the coronary sulcus. This is a little groove that holds the coronary arteries and veins, and these are important in providing nutrients to the heart itself. These coronary arteries and veins are going to run in this coronary sulcus. And then we also have another sulcus, this interventricular periconal sulcus. Uh, what they call it the periconal sulcus for is because you can see here, there's this little ridge that sticks out uh, on the right ventricle. And so this periconal side, they call it periconal because it's next to this cone or ridge that I just showed on the right view. Uh, so we call it the periconal sulcus, and this will carry, again, important nutrients in the form of the veins and arteries of the heart up and down from the apex, which is down here, back upwards towards the base of the heart. So this one I'll just write periconal interventricular sulcus. Great. So if we move towards the right view of the heart, we have a very similar story, but we have some different components. What's different on this right view of the heart is that I've added the vena cava. And this one, I'll keep it as the light blue color because this is deoxygenated blood. The vena cava carries deoxygenated blood from the heart, uh, sorry, from the systemic circulation and brings it back to the heart. When it brings it to the heart, it's going to dump it into this sinus, this sinus that is also going to be connected with the atrium of the heart. And in this case, we're on the right side of the, the right view of the heart, and everything is kind of back to how it should be as far as direction is concerned. So the right view, we're going to have on the right side, the right atrium. It's not inverted anymore. This is the right atrium, it's collecting deoxygenated blood, and the deoxygenated blood is going to get pumped into the right ventricle. Right ventricle. Great. From the right ventricle, like I showed in that left view image just over to the side here, uh, the blood is going to be pumped into the pulmonary trunk. I haven't drawn those here, but if they were here, it would be something like this running in the background. So the blood is going to go into the pulmonary trunk. And I'll draw here also the other aorta that we just talked about, because that's also here as well. So the blood is going to go into this right ventricle, collect down here, and then get pumped out the pulmonary trunk going towards the pulmonary circulation to be reoxygenated in the lungs. When we look at the left side of the heart, so here we have the left atrium and the right, sorry, and the left ventricle. Blood is going to go, we'll do this in dark blue, blood is going to have gone to the lungs, become reoxygenated, and it's going to come back to the heart following the pulmonary veins. And veins always bring blood towards the heart. So blood is going to enter all right here from the pulmonary veins. It's going to enter into the left atrium. It'll pull up here. The atrium is going to contract and push this rich blood rich with oxygen oxygen into the right uh, sorry into the left ventricle here it's going to collect and it's going to get pumped out into the aorta and out for systemic circulation great just like we showed in the other diagram this one I'll draw in green on this side we have the coronary sulcus carrying the coronary arteries and veins running around the circumference of the heart at the top. And then we have another longitudinal sulcus. On this side, we call it the subsinosal sulcus. 
And this is because it is underneath this sinus that we have on the right hand side of the heart. So this is the sub sinusal sulcus. And it's again in between the two ventricles. That's basically it for this video. In the next couple of videos, I'll talk about some of the actual structures within the ventricle and within the atria of the heart that allow for the pumping to, to work really in the path that it does. And uh, we'll talk also about the pericardium in a future video. But I think that's it for now, just talking about the basics of the, the blood flow, what we see on the heart, and the different compartments of the heart. Thanks.